Hi there, this is TJ Sawyer with Sawyer Aquatics, and I just wanted real quick to show everybody a little bit about pool factor and what it means in the AFO program when we're talking about pool factor. First thing I'm going to do is pull up my whiteboard here, and when we're talking about pool factor, we're talking about 120,000 gallons of water. Okay. So it's a ratio principle. Any pool, you're just going to put in a fractional representation here over the 120,000 gallons. So for example, if you have a 240,000 gallon pool and you d divide these two together, what you'll find is that you have a pool factor of two. We notate that with P of F. So we know it's pool factor. Now, what do you do with that? Um, well, it's just like baking, really. All right, so I'm gonna like separate it out here. Um, we're gonna just make a line. So we've calculated a pool factor for 240,000 gallon would give us a, a two pool factor. Uh, what if we're baking cookies? And what if those uh, cookies have, uh, in the recipe, it calls for two eggs and one cup of sugar. Um, and there's some other ingredients, like uh, maybe one teaspoon of baking soda, right? So if we want to make double the cookies, so um, we would multiply that by two, our pool factor, right? Um, so that would give us, if we wanted to make double the batch, double the batch, all we need to do, right, is to um, create uh, a list of ingredients that reflects double the amount of ingredients. So we have four eggs, uh, two cups of sugar, and one tablespoon of baking baking soda. Uh, I know everybody is thinking, what about the butter? Uh, should I backtrack? Yeah, I think so. If we're gonna make, if we're gonna actually make cookies, you know, without butter, they'd be pretty lousy cookies too. Um, so I'll we'll probably go ahead and do that too. So yeah, what if um, it was one stick of butter? And I don't know if this is really gonna make a good batch of cookies. So please don't follow my recipe. Um, you may be disappointed. I'm better at pools than I am at cooking. All right, so two sticks of butter. So we could call this two, we could call that the cookie factor, right? Now the same thing would happen if we wanted to um, create a smaller batch. So if we wanted to have a half batch, and I do this a lot in the morning with pancakes because I'm not trying to have a ton of pancakes. So if I, if I created a cookie factor of 0.5, like I have here, then what would I do? Well, I would take it and I'd move it down here and I would create my ingredients list in the same way. Um, I would run the original recipe times 0.5 and that's gonna give me a new batch of ingredients over here, right? And so what we have, two eggs, one egg instead of two, uh, 0.5 cup of sugar. So I'm just multiplying it by 0.5, I'm halving the recipe. 0.5 teaspoon of baking soda or 0.5 stick of butter. Butter, there we go, right? So on a concept level, we're just creating a ratio. Uh, and trying to size accordingly. Now with the pool factor, pool factor, 
Um, we're using the ingredients from the white sheet. On our white sheet that comes with the handbook, um, excuse me, the AFO manual, uh, it tells us that 18 pounds of sodium bicarb or 13 pounds of calcium or uh, there's there's some also for uh, chlorine um, one pound of Cl2 gas uh, one gallon of sodium hypo or 1.5 pounds calcium hypo. All right, so these give us uh, different reactions with, when it comes to uh, any of these. Um, excuse me, I'm going to backtrack that. So when it comes to any of these, these two, sodium bicarbonate and calcium, uh, are going to give us a 10 ppm rise in uh, in our levels, in our, either our alkalinity for the uh, sodium bicarbonate, ALK, or um, our calcium, and we usually notate calcium Cl, Cal, right? So for either of those, we uh, we can achieve that with these chemicals and this amount in a 120,000 gallon pool, right? So when the pool factor is one, I'm going to notate that P of F of one, then these come into play. Any of uh, any of these from here down will give us a one ppm rise in chlorine, which we notate as Cl. Now, why do we want to do that? Because we have ideal chemistry of our pool. Uh, we're going to want our alkalinity to be between 80 and 120. Um, and we're going to want our calcium to be uh, between 300 and 400. And we're going to want our free chlorine to be between one and three. All right. So chances are, it's not coming out of the faucet that way. So this is our toolbox, right? We've got to get the chemicals in the water that we need. And we have these chemicals to work with as far as things that we can use to get us into the ideal range. And just like baking the cookies, we're going to make a factor. So we know, for example, um, if we want to get a 10 part per million rise in a 240,000 gallon pool, then uh, what we would do, if we multiply 18 for the bicarb, let's see, it's confusing. So I'm gonna put it like this. So if we multiply this times two times any of those, uh, for example, let's make a box. That would give us um, 36. And then this one down here, uh, that would be 26 if we mul just multiply them by two. Hang 
And just to make it more clear, I'm going to say equals 3626 for um, the calcium there. And I'm going to put this, um, this line to indicate where they came from, right? So now you have your stepping stone, 36 pounds will give you a 10 part per million rise in your um, sodium bicarbonate uh, rendering alkalinity. Or if you use calcium, it'll give you a 10 part per million rise if in a 240,000 gallon pool, if you use 26 pounds, just by doubling the ingredient, you get the same uh, result. Uh, the alkalinity and the calcium per the white sheet are moving in tens because usually the movement is more substantial. Whereas with the chlorine, uh, you're looking at having smaller dosages because um, you're moving in one gallon, one pound, a pound and a half. So I hope that's helpful to understand how the pool factor works and what you're trying to achieve by targeting for the ideal water chemistry using the pool factor per the um, amounts listed on the white sheet. Thank you. Well, I hope you have a wonderful day and check back for more updates from me here at SawyerAquatics.com.